An adjustment layer allows us to experiment with color and tonal adjustments in an image without permanently modifying the pixels in the image. These changes reside within the adjustment layer, which acts as a screen through which the underlying image layers appear. When we create an adjustment layer, its adjustments will affect all of the layers below it. This will allow us to correct multiple layers with a single adjustment, rather than having to make adjustments to each layer. Before we get started, let's close all the open images by clicking their close buttons. We'll answer no to the save changes prompts. For this demonstration, we'll need to load the image 1 PSD file. This is done by pressing the Control plus O and double clicking image 1 PSD from the list of files. After clicking on the layers tab, we can see the various layers that make up this image. The top layer is a border. Notice the italic F which appears next to the layer name. This indicates that a layer effect has been applied. Layer effects are new for Photoshop 5 and we'll discuss them more in a moment. The next layer is titled Hue Saturation and is an adjustment layer which adjusts the hue and saturation of the layers below. To see the settings for this layer, we double-click the half-filled circle to the far right of the layer name. We now see the Hue Saturation dialog box. Here we can edit the hue, saturation, and lightness with the sliders. When we drag the slider for the hue, notice the spectrum bar at the bottom adjusts to illustrate how the colors will be shifted. According to the spectrum, all red hues will now be blue. Blue hue will be green, and green hues will be red. Let's drag the slider back to 40 and click OK. Another new feature for the adjustment layer is the ability to apply a mask, much the same way we would apply a layer mask to any other layer. Currently, the mask for this layer is active. To disable the mask, we right-click the layer name. Then select Disable Layer Mask from the shortcut menu. Now the entire image is affected. We also see a red X across the thumbnail for the layer. We do not want the entire image affected by this adjustment layer, but we do want the text to be affected by the adjustment layer. Because the text is in the previous layer to the adjustment layer, we can simply group the adjustment layer with the previous layer, and only the text will be affected. To do this, we open the Layer menu and select Group with Previous. The colors for the graphics on this image can be changed back to normal, but the text stayed the same. Let's press Control plus S to save our changes. Let's see what other types of adjustment layers can be applied. We click the arrow on the edge of the Layers palette, then select New Adjustment Layer from the Flyout menu. The New Adjustment Layer dialog box appears. Click the drop-down arrow next to Type to see what types of adjustments can be made. We see Levels, curves, brightness contrast, color balance, hue saturation, selective color, channel mixer, invert, threshold, and posturize. Many of these are the same adjustments that can be made through the image menu. However, we can change these settings at any time while we are working on our project. We'll click outside the list to close it. Let's click the Cancel button to close this dialog box. The Layer Effects command is similar to a filter, except like the Adjustment Layer, it is editable at any time. Some of these effects include Outer Glow, Inner Bevel, Emboss, and Drop Shadow. Previously, these types of effects were only available as plugins and could not be changed once they were applied. As we mentioned before, the italic F indicates a layer effect has been applied to a layer or a portion of a layer. Layer effects can be added to any layer, including adjustment layers. Let's take a look at the effects applied to the Photoshop layer by clicking on it. To see the controls for the effects, we double-click the italic F next to the layer name. We now see the effects dialog box. We see that a drop shadow has been applied to this layer. We can adjust the mode, opacity, angle, distance, blur, intensity, and color of the shadow. Since we no longer want this effect, 
Simply click the checkbox next to apply and the effect is removed. Let's click the drop down arrow next to drop shadow. We see all the effects we can apply to a layer. Drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, and bevel emboss. Let's select outer glow. We can see that this effect has been applied also. Let's click OK to close this box. We can apply as many effects as we want to each layer. We can also apply different effects to different parts of a layer simply by creating a selection, then applying the effect. The next layer feature we want to discuss is the Layer Type tool. When we apply text, not only is a new layer created, but a T is added to the layer indicating that it contains text. Like the italic F for the layer effects, we can click the capital T in the Layers box to edit the text after we have entered it. Let's double click the capital T in the Photoshop layer. The Type Tool dialog box appears. If you get an error message stating that a font substitution will be made, it means that one or more of the fonts used in the file are not available on your computer and will be replaced by an available font. In which case, simply click OK to continue. We can edit the text along with all of its attributes. Let's select the P, then adjust the tracking to negative 180. Click OK to close this dialog box. We see the text has been changed and the layer effects have been adjusted accordingly. A layer mask is a black and white image that defines what part of a layer is visible and which parts are transparent. A layer mask is useful when we know what shape we don't want to see in a layer, but do not want to delete any part of the image in that layer. The first thing we need is a selection. We'll load the selection that is saved with this file. We open the Select menu and choose Load Selection. In the Load Selection dialog box, we click the drop-down arrow for Channel and select Alpha 1. Then click OK. Marching ants appear on the screen and we know the selection was loaded. To turn the selection into a layer mask, first select the Disco Ball layer. Then click Layer in the menu bar and choose Add Layer Mask. There are several choices available including Reveal All and Hide All. We'll choose the Hide Selection command. The marching ants disappear as well as a portion of the layer. We now see the layer mask in the Layers menu next to the thumbnail of the Disco Ball layer. Let's take a look at this for a moment. We see an eye showing the layer is visible, followed by the Quick Mask Mode icon. We see this icon because the layer mask is currently selected. If we were to use the paintbrush now, it would either hide or reveal a part of the layer because we would be painting on the layer mask. Next, we see the layer thumbnail, then a chain link icon. The chain link icon signifies that the layer and the layer mask are linked. This is the default. Any changes we make to the position of one will be made to the other. If we click the chain link icon, it disappears signifying that the layer and layer mask are no longer linked. We'll click the chain link icon again to join the layer and layer mask. Finally, we see the layer mask thumbnail, which is a small preview of the contents of the layer mask. Let's click the layer thumbnail. Notice that a paintbrush icon replaces the quick mask icon. This indicates that the layer and not the mask is selected. Let's discuss some of the icons located on the Layers As we mentioned earlier, the eye icon indicates that the layer is visible. To hide a layer, we click the eye icon next to that layer. We'll click the eye icon next to the border layer, and the layer disappears from the image. We click the empty box, and the image returns as well as the eye icon. At the bottom of the palette, we see three icons. If we click the Quick Mask icon, a layer mask will be created. If we click the Page icon, a new layer will be created. And if we click the Trash icon, a layer or layer mask will be deleted. Let's merge some layers. We only want to merge the Disco Ball layer and the Background layer, so we must first hide the other layers. We click the Eye icon next to the Borders layer. 
then the eye icon next to the adjustment layer and hide the Photoshop layer as well. Then we click the black arrow on the side of the palette and choose Merge Visible from the flyout menu. The disco ball layer is now a part of the background. We now reveal the other layers by clicking the layer visibility buttons. When we are finished with the image, we'll want to flatten the image. This merges all of the layers into the background. This not only allows us to save the file in a format other than Photoshop, but it also decreases the file size dramatically. We open the Layers menu and choose the Flatten Image command. Notice that all of the layers, including adjustment layers, are now part of the background. Let's save this file. We click File in the menu bar. Then choose Save As. In the Save As dialog box, we'll name this file Final. Because we want the selection channel to be saved with the image, we'll press Tab to go to the Save As field, then press T for Targa. Click the Save button. With the 32-bit radio button selected, click OK. In this chapter, we learned about adjustment layers explaining what they are and how they are used. We applied an adjustment layer, then used the group with previous option to limit the adjustment to one layer. We also demonstrated layer effects and what the icons on the layers indicate. Then we learned how to create a layer mask from a selection. Finally, we learned how to merge and flatten an image.